Hey guys, we're doing another logo animation tutorial in Apple Motion today. And this one I'm super excited about because the logo we're working with is for my new upcoming course, Agency Kickstart. It's different from my other courses because it's not super technical. It's not about editing or motion graphics. It's really about the back end of running a production company, which I've done for well over 10 years. And I'm spilling like a lot of secrets, like how to get clients, how I price projects, what needs to be in your contracts, how to know when you're ready to grow, what to spend money on, what not to spend money on. So there's going to be a lot of meat that nobody tells you in the production industry. So I'm super excited about it. But for now, let's just dive right into the tutorial. We're actually going to start this tutorial in Pixelmator Pro. Okay, so we're going to start with a PSD version of this agency kickstart logo. And I'm going to right click and open with Pixelmator Pro so we can do a little bit of pre-work with this logo before we bring it into motion. I should also mention that all of the patrons on my Patreon get access to my working motion files. So in this case, you're gonna get access to this logo because I own it. You're gonna get access to the Pixelmator project and you'll get access to the motion project once you see me create it here. So if you're interested in that, I know a lot of people love to dig into my working files, just join my Patreon community. All right, let's keep going. And here is what we have in Pixelmator Pro. A lot of these layers are separate elements that I want to merge and combine for ease of use in motion. And then there are some things I want to separate out. So let's first talk about what we want to merge. The word agency is the white outline and the black fill. And I want those to be one piece. So I'm going to select both of them in my layers panel by holding down the shift key as I click them both. And I'm going to select merge. The next one I want to merge is this clapper here. So you can see I've got the black elements of the clapper and then the red play button is like this circle and then the white fill on the clapper stripes are these white rectangles. I'm going to select all of those, right click and merge those as well. And the last thing I want to merge is the word kickstart here. You can see I've got the green and yellow gradient fill and the black background separately. I'm going to select both of those and merge those as well. All right, now I'm going to disable everything but that kickstart by just unchecking them in my layers panel. And now what I want to do is section out each one of these letters one at a time here in Pixelmator Pro. So what I'm going to do is make sure I'm selected on it in my layers panel. We're going to head on over to the selection tools. And the one I'm looking for is the polygonal selection. And I'm gonna start with this K. So I'm just gonna click around it. And because of the black outline, it is a little bit tricky to cut these letters out, but they don't have to be perfect. So now I've closed up my selection and now I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy and paste as a layer. So here in my layers panel, you can see I have just a K as a letter. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. In my layers panel, make sure I'm selected back on the original kickstart. And now we're going to do the I and we'll do the same thing here. Right click, copy and paste as a layer. There's my I. Again, select the kickstart layer. And I'm just going to keep going. This is going to take a minute. Let me speed it up for you guys. All right, now that I've finished with that, I'm just going to enable all of the layers in my layers panel. I'm going to select that kickstart layer that has all the letters and I'm actually going to delete it because I don't wanna bring that into motion. And I'm also going to select all of my individual layers that I just cut out and I'm going to group those. So you'll see when we bring this into motion that all of these letters will come in as a group in motion, which is great and exactly what I want. And then all of these other layers that we merged, like the clapper and agency, those will come in just as singular elements, which is also what we want. So let's head up to file, export, and let's select motion project. And it's gonna ask me for the details of the motion project. So I'm gonna leave the frame rate at 24 frames, but I'm gonna change this duration to 10 seconds. Let's hit export. And now if we head to my desktop, you can see I have a new folder here with the motion project in it. I'm gonna double click that to open our motion project. 
All right, here we are in our motion project. If we look in our project pane, you can see that everything came in exactly as we expected it. The word agency is merged into one element with both the black and white outline. Kickstart came in as a group with each individual letter. The clapper is all one element instead of four separate elements like it was when we first opened it in Pixelmator Pro. And then we have all of our splashes here together as well. All right, I'm going to start by disabling the kickstart group in all of my little paint splatters here. And this gray background you hear is something I set in my preferences because we're dealing with so many black elements in this logo. But you can see there's no color background or image layer at the bottom of our project pane. All right, the first thing I think I want to do is have this clapper slide in from the left to reveal the word agency. So what I want to do first and foremost is queue up my playhead, let's say to 16 frames in my timeline. And in my inspector window under properties, I want to add keyframes for the final position of this logo and then work backwards from there. So I'm going to add a position keyframe and I'm also going to add a rotation keyframe. Now I want to jump back 14 frames in my timeline and let's play with these values a bit. I'm going to slide here on the X value and I want to position this as if the clapboard is going to completely cover the word agency eventually. So I'm going to move it up a little bit and I'm even going to rotate it a hair. Let's rotate it, let's say negative 14 degrees. And so now when I run my playhead, you can see by the time I get to the 16th frame, it's actually in its correct rotation and position. Let's play with the motion of this in the keyframe editor. So down in my keyframe editor, I want to select all of these keyframes and make the interpolation on all of them Bezier. And then on the transform position X, let's select that first keyframe and let's really make this like a backward S curve. And then on the Z rotation, Let's make that more of a forward S curve. So there is our motion. Now, like I said, I want this clapper to cover the word agency. So here in my project pane, I'm actually gonna grab it and bring it to the top of my group. So it really covers that word. And the next thing we wanna do is crop the word agency. So it really looks like this clapboard is revealing it. So let's select the word agency here in our project pane. Cue up our playhead to the same point, 16 frames in, that the clapper ends its movement. And then here in the inspector window, let's enable cropping and hit show to drop down. And we wanna crop from the left side. So I'm gonna add a keyframe here. Remember, we're starting where we want our positioning and cropping to end in our animation. And then I'm gonna run my playhead to the beginning of the clapper motion, and I'm going to crop all the way up until the word agency is completely hidden. And if I play that back, you can see because of the interpolation of the movement with the clapboard, the cropping is not matching exactly. So we're going to, in our keyframe editor, try to match that. So we're gonna make that Bezier. And remember, I made that X value change on the clapper a backward S curve. And the last thing I wanna do is add a fade in and fade out on this clapper because I don't want it to just be there right away when we start our animation. So I'm going to select it in my project pane under behaviors. Let's go fade in and fade out. And we're just going to make this fade in time three frames and we're going to make the fade out zero. And there we go, that is what our animation looks like. It looks great so far. All right, let's work on the kickstart letters. Let's enable that group and drop down so we can see each of the letters. Now, what I'm noticing is that the clapboard is overlapping our word kickstart, which is not right. It's kickstart supposed to go in front of the clapboard. So I'm just gonna grab that whole group and reorder here in my project pane so that it's above the clapper. Now we're getting somewhere. And let's start with this first letter K. I'm going to add a behavior to this letter. So let's select it in our project pane, head on up to behaviors. We're going to go to parameter and overshoot, my favorite behavior. Let's reduce the duration of this overshoot to just 10 frames. So I'm gonna queue up my playhead to the 10 frame mark here in my timeline, and I'm going to hit the O key to trim that overshoot. Now in the inspector window under the apply to line, we're gonna to go to properties, transform, position, and Y. And our start value is going to be 145. Our end value will stay at zero. Our ramp duration, let's bring it down to about the 27 mark. And for cycles, we're gonna leave it at three. 
Let's add another behavior to this K because I really want the K to come in from an angle from the left. Do you see how like the whole word is sort of like slanted here? It's a bit of on a tilt. I want the motion to match that feeling a little bit. So let's add a move behavior. So select the K, head it up to behaviors, basic motion, move. Let's make the move behavior just four frames. So select it on it in our timeline, cue up the playhead to the four frame mark and hit the O key. And now you can see by default what the move is doing. It's bringing the K to the center of the screen here. What we wanna do first is on the direction, we wanna select from to to from in our inspector window. And now it's landing in the spot we want it to land in, but it's still not coming from the direction we want. So I'm gonna cue up my playhead to the beginning of that move behavior. And let's use these arrows in our canvas to reposition the start point. So the blue dot would be the start point, And now it's going to end where we want it to go. All right, and one more thing we're gonna add to this K is a fade in, fade out behavior. So select it, going up to behaviors, you know where it is, basic motion. And we're gonna make the fade in time on this three and the fade out is zero. Okay, now I'm going to copy and paste all of those behaviors we just added to the rest of the letters. So let's select all of them here in our project pane, holding down the shift key to select them all. We're going to right click and hit copy and then select all of these other layers in our project pane. So I'm gonna select the I, hold down my shift key, get all the way down to the T. So I've selected that whole group, right click and paste. And there they are. You'll notice with the move behavior, they're all coming in from that same point. Do you see that? Which is not what I want. I want them all to kind of come in just slightly at an angle. So now I'm going to manually move the start point on each of these letters by selecting the move behavior on each letter one at a time and just moving it over slightly with the red arrow. Guys, while I'm fine tuning these move behaviors, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, make sure you let me know by giving me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Okay, and now that I've got all of my letters coming in the way I want, I wanna stagger the timing of them so they're not all coming in at once. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab that entire group of letters and I'm going to move it seven frames in in my timeline. Now to kind of condense my timeline here so I can see more of my timeline, I'm going to close the keyframe editor and I'm also going to hit this button here to hide my behaviors. And now we can more easily see all of the elements in our timeline. And so letter by letter, I'm going to have them come in one at a time. All right, we're almost done. Now we just wanna deal with those paint splatters. I'm actually going to group them here in my layers pane to make them all one element. Let's select that group, head on up to filters, head to distortion and twirl. And that's giving our paint filters kind of this swirly look. Next, I'm going to add a behavior we're going to go to behaviors, parameter, and the overshoot behavior again. And then in my inspector window under the apply to line, we're actually gonna to go to two, filters, twirl, and then the option we're gonna select after that is also called twirl. I'm going to enable my behaviors in my timeline so I can see that overshoot that we just added. And I'm going to cue up my playhead to the 13 frame mark and select that overshoot and hit O to trim it to 13 frames. On the start value on this, we're going to change this to 550. Let's leave the end value at zero. On the ramp duration, let's go nine. And then let's reduce the cycles to two. Again, on that group, let's add a fade in and fade out behavior. Let's make the fade in on this one a little bit longer than we've been doing. Let's go six and make the fade out zero. And then I'm going to take that entire group and I'm going to move it to the 11 frame point in my timeline. And there is our animation. I love it. I think it's really fun. If you're interested in checking out Agency Kickstart, don't forget to sign up at jenjager.com to let it know when it drops soon and for pre-order pricing. And of course, if you want my working files, join my very lovely Patreon community. You guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again.